Andy and the Circus, written and illustrated by Alice Cridell. It was a hot afternoon. Andy had been to town to do some errands. He had a block of ice for his mother's old ice chest and a heavy iron point for his father's plow. In his pocket was a little bag of whorehound candy for Grandpa. He was pedaling home, pushing hard, when he came upon a circus poster. Andy braked his bike and stood looking. Oh, what a picture! Up high, men and women were flying from swing to swing. Monkeys pedaled bicycles on a high wire, and the clowns, oh, the clowns! Everywhere there were clowns doing funny tricks. Oh, what fun to be a clown, Andy thought, to be in the circus doing funny tricks. What fun to sleep on a train, wake up in a new town every morning, to be a clown in the big show. He could have stayed all day looking, but the ice was melting. He had to shove on. Along the road was Joe's house, and there was Joe running down the walk. He was holding a big basket. Wait a minute, Andy, Joe cried. I want to show you what I've got. He held out the basket. Andy stopped. He leaned over and peered. The box was full of kittens. My, they sure are cute, Joe. Andy hung over the kittens. I wish I had one. Could you give me just one, Joe? No, sirree, Andy. I want every single one. Boy, am I lucky. Hi, boys. Aunt Minnie drove up in her buggy. Are you going to the big circus tomorrow? Sure am, Joe called. Pa's going to take me. We've got money for a front row seat. You going, Andy? Dunno yet. Andy put his hands into his jeans. Not a penny in his pocket. There wasn't much money in his house. He shuffled his feet and whistled a little tune. Better scratch up some cash and go, Andy, Aunt Minnie called as she drove away. It's going to be a humdinger. Well, maybe I can. Andy waved goodbye. Then he pushed off. So long, he said to Joe. Got to get on. This ice is melting. He pedaled on. Mildred lived in the next house. Mildred was pretty, and she thought everything Andy did was tops. As Andy came near, he took his hands off the handlebars and rode no hands. He pretended not to see Mildred running toward him. Oh, Andy, she called. Andy stopped. Did you see the circus picture, Andy? I'm going, and I'm going to take Miss Melissa. Who's Miss Melissa? My doll, of course. I'm making her a new dress to wear. Are you going to the circus, Andy? Oh, sure, Andy said grandly. I'm going to be a clown when I'm grown up. I have to get ideas for my clown act. Oh, Andy, how wonderful. Well, I've got to get this ice home. So long, Mildred. Andy rode on. Gee, I've got to get a ticket to that circus. If I'm not there, what will Mildred think? Near Bill's house, he heard a shout, and Bill came running across the potato field. Hey, Andy, wait. Look what I've got. I caught him in the ditch. Andy slowed down. Bill put his hand into his pocket and brought out a large bullfrog. Boy, is he a jumper. Our scout troop is having a frog race tomorrow. If this baby doesn't win that race, I'll eat my shoes. He's a big one, all right. Andy examined the frog. Just watch him. Bill set the frog on the path. For a moment, it sat staring. Its big eyes bulged. Then it made a jump, then another, and another. Look at him go, yelled Andy. He's a champion, cried Bill. Watch out, cried Andy. He's headed for the potato vines. If he gets in there, you'll never find him. Bill made a grab for his frog. He snatched, he pounced, but the frog was too quick for him. Andy went grabbing too, but it was no use. With one last jump into the potato patch, the frog was lost. The boys lifted the big leaves. Up one row and down another they went. They peered and peered, but the frog was nowhere to be seen. Finally, Andy gave up. I've got to get along. Ma's ice is melting fast. Sure I'm sorry about your jumper, Bill. Yeah, Bill looked downhearted. He was good enough to be in the circus. Then, all of a sudden, he looked cheerful. Well, anyway, I'm going to the circus. It's a big one. You going, Andy? I'm thinking about it. Andy looked down. He scuffed one foot in the dust. Then he got onto his bike. So long, Bill. He rode across feeling low. How could he get the money to go to the circus? He remembered that Mom sometimes had a little money. She saved it from selling eggs. He'd seen her putting it into a coffee can in the kitchen. I'll ask Mom, he thought, and felt more cheerful. Maybe she'll give me the money.
He pedaled on, whistling. On the road ahead, he caught sight of his friend Jeff. Trotting beside him was Sookie, his pet pig. Andy perked up. Jeff was fun. He had a yard full of pets. Hi, Andy. Jeff opened his front gate. Come see, I've taught Sookie a new trick. Andy put his hat over the ice to shade it. Then he followed Jeff into his backyard. There were all the animals eating supper. Now just watch. Jeff set Sookie on top of a basketball. Then he put an apple on her head. She sat straight up and the apple stayed put. Gee, Andy exclaimed, Sookie's a bright little pig. Jeff's mother was on the back porch. She sure is, she agreed, but she's eating us out of house and home. Why, the corn that pig eats would keep two orphans alive. Jeff has got to get rid of some of this zoo. This pig goes first. Jeff laughed. She's always saying that, he said to Andy. Don't worry, she doesn't mean it. Andy looked at Jeff's mother. Maybe she did mean it. She looked fretted. Got to shove along now. He put his hat in and climbed to the bike. See you at the circus. Jeff waved him goodbye. When Andy got home, his dog, Dookie, came barking and begging for a ride on the platform. No ride this time, Dookie. Andy rode around to the back. He lifted out the block of ice and took it into the kitchen. Mom was there waiting. My goodness, it's melted half away, she said as Andy put it into the old ice box. I'll be glad when I can buy a refrigerator. Those things make their own ice. It's like a miracle. You don't have to haul in ice every day. Boy, would that be great, Andy said. I've been saving and saving to buy one, Ma said. Every extra penny I put into that coffee can. I counted the money today. I have a few more dollars and I'll have it. Andy's spirits sink. How could he ask Mom for money when she needed every penny to buy a refrigerator? He got a cracker for Dookie and wandered sadly onto the back porch. Sit, Andy said, and tossed the cracker. Dookie caught it in his mouth. Good boy. Dookie could learn tricks, too. At the barn, Andy could see Pop taking the horse harness off the mule. Maybe he would give him the circus money. I'll go ask Pop. He wheeled the plow point to the barn. I'm sure glad to get this, Pop said as he lifted off the point. This old mule had slow work today with that dull point. Andy was just about to ask for the circus money when Pop said, I'm saving to buy a tractor. Just think, Andy, with a tractor I can plow six rows at a time. I can raise a lot more cotton and make a lot more money. Every penny I can spare I put into the bank for our tractor. Andy's face fell. It didn't seem right to ask Pop for money when he was saving to buy a tractor. Excuse me. He scuffed and scuffed his feet, thinking about the circus. Nope, I can't ask Pop for his tractor money. He felt downhearted. Well, he said to Pop, I'd better take Grandpa his candy. He ran along the path that led across the field to Grandpa's. Maybe Gramps will have some money, he thought. Maybe he'll buy me a ticket. Andy's hopes rose. He found Grandpa in the front yard mowing the lawn. Sitting on a limb of the apple tree was Blackie, his pet crow. Corn, 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 Blackie caught as Andy entered the yard. Grandpa stopped his work. It's all he thinks of. Corn, he complained. Most crows can learn to talk a little, but this one doesn't want to learn. He only wants to holler, corn. Well, boy, did you bring my whorehound? Sure did, Gramps. Andy held out the bag. Thanks, son. Grandpa put it into his pocket. When I get through mowing, I'll sit down and have a treat. You have some? Thanks. Andy took some candy. Say, Gramps, are you saving to buy a power mower, he asked. Nope, Grandpa replied. Pushing this mower keeps my joints from getting rusty. Don't let any of these newfangled gadgets that run by themselves. I'd rather do things with my own hands. Well, Gramps, if you're not saving your money for anything, could you buy me a circus ticket? Great snakes, boy. Don't go bothering people for money. If you want a ticket to the circus, go to the circus grounds and get yourself a job. They'll pay you with a ticket to the big show. Andy's ears stood out. A job on the circus grounds? What kind of a job? Lots of things a boy can do. Water the elephants, curry down the zebras, pull the ropes that hoist the big tent. Takes a lot of boys to pull that tent up. Honest, Gramps, do you think I could get a job like that? Why, sure, but you'll have to get there early, right after sunup. Once they get that tent up, it'll be too late. They don't want any kids around after that. They'll be busy then getting dressed for the big parade. Golly, Gramps, thanks, I'll try it. Andy bounded along home. He told Mom and Pop of his plan. They both thought it was a fine idea. Andy hurried through his chores. He emptied the drip pan under the icebox. He gave the mule eight ears of corn and some hay. That night, he went to bed early. 
He was almost too excited to sleep, but at last he dropped off. When he awoke, the roosters were crowing. The sun would soon be up. He got up in a hurry and jumped into his clothes. He ran down to the kitchen. Mom was there rushing around. I've already fixed your breakfast, she said, and put a plate of hot cornbread and a slice of fried ham on the table. I'll eat going along. Andy made a bread and ham sandwich and took a huge bite. He hurried out and jumped on his bike. Hey, Andy, wait, Mom came running. Take this watermelon to your grandma in town. She's sick in bed. It'll tempt her to eat. Sure will, Mom. Mom put the watermelon into the basket. Andy gave a push with his foot, and he was off. He was whizzing through the gate when he heard someone shouting. He looked back. There running after him was Gramps with Blackie the crow. Hey, Andy, Grandpa shouted. Wait a minute. Andy broke the bike, and Grandpa came hurrying. Here, boy, take this pesky bird clean away. Gramps, what's the matter? You want to get rid of Blackie? Sure do. Can't get my sleep with this bird around. Come sit on my window every morning. Wakes me up at the crack of dawn. Corn, corn, corn. He starts a calm before it's light. But, but what'll I do with him? I don't care. Well, give him to your Aunt Minnie. She's always saying it's hard to wake up mornings. He'll fix that. But Gramps, I can't carry him. He'll fly away. No, he won't. I've got a lead sinker tied to his foot. He'll sit right here on your hat. Get along now or you'll be late. And he rode away with the crow on his hat. He had hardly gone half a mile when he heard a barking behind him. He looked back. There was Dookie running after him. Andy's heart sank. He had forgotten to shut the gate. Go home, Dookie, he shouted. It would not do to have Dookie follow to the circus grounds. An elephant might step on him, or maybe he'd go sniffing into the lion's cages. Dookie, go home. Dookie paid no mind. He ran on barking. Andy slowed down. There was only one thing to do. Come, Dookie, have a ride. Dookie came bounding. And he lifted him up and set him on the back platform. Sitting there, he'd be out of mischief. And he pedaled as fast as he could. He was soon inside of Jeff's house. There was Jeff sneaking through the gate. He kept looking back over his shoulder. I wonder what's the matter, Andy thought. Jeff acts like something is after him. And there, he's got Sookie on the end of a rope. That's funny. Sookie always follows. She doesn't need any rope. Once on the road, Jeff began to run so fast that Sookie could not keep up. Jeff dragged her along. Andy rode fast and overtook them. Hey, Jeff, what's happened? Why all the hurry? Oh, Andy, Jeff panted. Ma and Pa have decided to sell Sookie. The man's coming for her right away. They say he'll only put her in the woods to eat acorns, but I'm afraid he'll take her to the butcher. To the butcher, Andy's eyes bulged. His bike wobbled. A pretty little pig, a smart little pig like Sookie. Can't you hide her, Jeff? No time, Jeff peered behind. Here comes the man. Andy looked. Down the road came a truck, stirring up dust. Quick, Andy, Jeff cried. Put Sookie in your basket and get her away. But the basket's full. You can see. I've got a melon for Grandma. She's sick. Sookie can sit on the melon and easy as pie. But I'm going to the circus grounds to get a job. What'll I do with her? Get her a job, too. Any clown would be glad to get Sookie. She can do tricks. Well, Annie looked back. The truck was almost on them. Heft her up, Jeff. Quickly, Jeff lifted Sookie. He gave her a kiss on her little pink snout. Sit right there, Sookie baby. You'll have fun with the circus. Snooky grunted affectionately. <laughs> Andy gave a push. Gosh, the bike was getting heavy. He got it rolling and pedaled away. He had just passed Bill's potato patch when he heard a shout. Andy, hey Andy. He looked around. There was Bill's mother on the porch. I just caught him, she cried and held up a long-legged bullfrog in the potato patch. Put my hand into a scrabble out of potato and felt something clammy. It scared me almost to death. I thought it was a snake. But no, it was Bill's jumper. Must be him, Andy agreed. Say, Andy, can't you take him to Bill? He's gone to town for the jumping frog race. They're having it early so the boys can go to the circus parade. Bill was awfully put out about losing his frog. He searched and searched yesterday. Didn't give up till Sunday down. Do take him along, Andy. How can I carry him, Mrs. Jones? He'll jump away. Oh, Mrs. Jones looked worried. That's so. Then she brightened. I've got an idea. She rushed into the house and brought an ice cube. She popped it into the frog's mouth. 
He won't jump now, Andy, she assured him. Frogs don't jump when they're cold. Frogs hardly move when they're cold. They sleep all winter. With that ice in his mouth, he'll think it's cold winter time. He'll snooze the whole way to town. When he gets there, Bill can take the ice out of his mouth. He'll warm up and be as lively as ever. But where can I put him? Why, right here on Sookie's head. She does tricks, doesn't she? She can hold a frog on her head. Well, all right, Mrs. Jones, I'll try. Mrs. Jones set the frog on Sookie's head. There he sat, goggling straight ahead. Andy started to push off. Wait, Andy, do take these. The scoutmaster asked Bill to bring some baby frogs to show the boys. Bill was so upset about losing his fancy jumper, he forgot. She held out a jar. Baby frogs? They don't look like frogs. But they are. They're tadpoles. They'll grow feet and drop their tails, and then they're frogs. Oh, gee, Mrs. Jones, I can't carry a jar of tadpoles. Shucks, Andy. I've seen you ride no hands lots of times. Hold the jar in your left hand. It's not far. Well, I'll try. Andy took the jar and rode on. Up ahead was Mildred's house, and there was Mildred running down the walk. She had her doll, Miss Melissa, in her arms. Andy, wait, she cried. Where are you going, Andy? Andy put out his right hand and caught hold of the gate. Go into the circus grounds to get a job. Oh, job, how great! Oh, Andy, can't you take Miss Melissa? Miss Melissa, your doll? Andy was shocked. Yes, my doll, here she is, all dressed up. I promised to take her myself, but Mama won't let me. Miss Melissa is terribly disappointed. She feels like crying. Tears began to roll from Mildred's eyes. They made Andy feel upset. But where can I put a doll? Looks like I'm loaded. Let her sit here. Mildred took Blackie away and made a dent in Andy's hat. From here, she can see everything. But what about Grandpa's crow? He can sit right here. Mildred set Blackie on top of Miss Melissa's head. Blackie fluttered his wings and tried to take off, but the lead sinker was too heavy for him. Thank you, Andy. Miss Melissa will never forget this. Oh, that's all right. I'm glad to help out. Bye, Mildred. I've got to hurry. Andy squinted at the sun. Its rim was shining above pink clouds. It was getting late. Andy pedaled on. Gosh, I hope nobody else is in trouble. No such luck. Up ahead, he saw Joe running toward him. He was carrying something in his hat. Oh, Andy, wait. Something awful. Andy slowed down and then put a foot to the ground to stop himself. I heard Papa. Ah, Joe said out of breath. He took Mama. He was going to go to the mill and get some corn ground. Mama said, well, take those kittens. We can't have a house full of cats. What did she mean by that? Andy asked. There's a mill pond. Maybe Papa will throw my kittens into the mill pond. Andy was horrified. He peered into Joe's hat. The baby cats looked up at him. Can't you save my kittens, Andy? Take them with you, Andy. But I'm going to get a job on the circus grounds. What will I do with six kittens? Andy cried. Give them to your Aunt Minnie. She hasn't got any children, hasn't even got a husband. She'll be glad to have all these little cats. Hurry, Andy. There's Papa. He's hunting for them. Andy looked. Joe's papa was peering under the house, into the hen's nest, every which way. How can I carry six kittens, he exclaimed. There's no place to put them. Put them under your hat, Andy. All right, Joe. Stuff them under, but make it quick. I've got to get to the circus in a hurry. If I get there after the sun's high, I won't get a job. And look, it's climbing. Hurriedly, Joe lifted one side of Andy's hat. Excuse me. Watch out, Andy cried. Don't upset Miss Melissa. Joe shoved some of the kittens into the crown of the hat. Others he stuffed into Andy's pocket. Thank you, Andy. I'll do something for you some day. That's all right, Joe. Andy glanced toward the barn. Joe's father was hurrying toward them. Andy stepped hard on the pedals and streaked away. He could feel the kittens crawling on the top of his head. It gave him the jitters. Well, he comforted himself. It's not too far to Aunt Minnie's house. He was there in no time. Oh, Auntie, he called. Aunt Minnie waved. Auntie, come quick. I've got a present for you. Aunt Minnie came rushing out, a pie in one hand. Grandpa has sent you a present, Andy called. A present? Why, how sweet of Grandpa. Aunt Minnie looked pleased. What is it? It's Blackie here, his pet crow. Oh, Blackie. Aunt Minnie's voice went way down. He says Blackie will keep you from sleeping too late. He'll get you up mornings. Oh, no, he won't, cried Aunt Minnie. I'm not going to have that croaking critter. Grandpa can put him off on me. You tell him I don't want his present. But Aunt Minnie, Andy exclaimed, I'm on my way to the circus grounds. I can't take this crow. Well, you can't leave him here. That's flat, Aunt Minnie started into the house. 
Andy was upset. He felt the kitten scrabbling and squirming on top of his head. Aunt Minnie, wait, here's something else for you. Aunt Minnie turned. Another present? She looked sour. Yes, but you'll like this one. It's cute and pretty. From Joe down the road. Now, why would Joe be sending me a present? It's probably something he doesn't want. Oh, no, Aunt Minnie, he loves it. It, there are six little kittens, Aunt Minnie. Aunt Minnie screamed. And my own mother cat was seven already. Don't say another word. Go along with your presents. No, wait, I've got one for you. She held out the pie. It's for Grandma. Take it along to her. Aunt Minnie, cried Andy, where would I put a pie? Hold it in your right hand, Andy. I've seen you ride in no hands many a time. It's only a little way down the road. She set the pie in Andy's hand. And look, here's my little dicky bird. Take him along, too. He'll cheer Grandma up. And wait, here's her sewing basket. Aunt Minnie, cried Andy, I can't take all these things. Why, sure you can, Andy. Here, take the sewing basket in your left hand along with the tadpoles. She slipped the handle over his fingers. And now you can carry the birdcage on your right shoulder. Here, she slid it onto his arm. Now get ready. I'll give you a shove. You'll make it. Oh, gee. And Andy sat up straight, trying to balance. Aunt Minnie gave him a mighty push, and he was off. At first, he wobbled a little. Then he got going and rode fast. The sun was high now and shining brightly. If I take time to get these things to Grandma now, Andy thought, I'll never make it in time for a job. Up ahead, he saw the gate of the circus grounds. Flags were flying over the top. He could hear men shouting. Animals were trumpeting and roaring. Things were getting underway. It's now or never, thought Andy. Leaning this way and that to stay up, Andy rode through the gate. His hopes sank. There was a big tent already set up. All the circus people were dressed and ready for the big parade. He was too late. Too late to get a job. Too late to earn a ticket to the big show. Andy was heartsick. His bike wobbled this way and not. He saw the circus people staring. The ringmaster in a red coat. The spangled ladies. The clouds. Then he felt his front wheel going... Over a stone and slip, slide, skid, down he went with everything. The clowns ran to help, but Dookie barked at them and scared them away. Andy sat up. Oh, what a terrible mess. He began to cry. The ringmaster helped him up. Don't cry, Sonny. Nobody's hurt, he said. We'll catch all your livestock. We'll get you another watermelon, too. But... It's now. It's too late. I wanted a job, sobbed Andy. A job, asked the ringmaster. With a circus? Yes, sir, Andy replied. I, I got up at daybreak. I meant to get here early, but people kept asking me to take things. It slowed me down. Well, now, let me see, said the ringmaster. Maybe we can give you a job after all. Andy stopped crying. Do you think so? What could I do? How would you like to be a clown? A clown? Andy's eyes popped open. In the big show? That's right. But, but I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know how to be funny. Why, Sonny, said the ringmaster, you have just put on the funniest act I ever saw. See how everybody is laughing? Andy looked around. The spangled ladies, the men in fancy costumes, even the clowns were rocking with laughter. Couldn't you ride around the ring and fall down again just like you did a minute ago? Andy wiped the tears with the back of his hand. Why, sure, that would be easy, he grinned. You're hired, said the ringmaster. You're going to be a clown in the big show for the whole summer. Andy was overjoyed. He could hardly believe his good luck. I'll have to ask my folks, he said. You go home and ask them. Here are free tickets for everybody. Come right back and we'll get you ready for the show. Andy took off. By the time the parade was over, he was back. Mom and Pop had said yes. They were pleased he would have a chance to see the country and earn some money, too. The ringmaster took him to the dressing tent. The clowns painted his face and gave him a pair of big shoes. When the show opened that afternoon, how surprised Andy's friends were. There he was, riding around the ring. They thought his act was the funniest of all, the very best part of the show. So when the circus train left the next morning, they all were there to sell him goodbye. Mildred handed him a little valise. Here are Miss Melissa's clothes, she called. What a wonderful trip she'll have. 
Hey, Andy, cried Bill, put Froggy where there are lots of flies. He eats flies. Boy, cried Jeff, who was there with his parents, think of Sookie doing tricks for the circus. Gee, here's something for you, Andy. Aunt Mindy handed up a pie. This one is to eat. Goodbye, goodbye, Mom stood waving. Don't forget to brush your teeth every day, Pop called out. When you get back, I'll have the tractor. Times will be better. The train began to move. Remember what I said, boy, shouted Grandpa. Don't go bothering folks about money. Get yourself a job. It's more fun that way. Goodbye, goodbye, Andy waved back. Then the circus train pulled out. The end.